Hi, welcome to the Plains Art Museum. My name's Hayden. And I'm Olivia, and we're teaching artists here at the museum. Today, we're going to take you on a virtual tour of the Plains Art Museum and look at the exhibition to see what I could see. We're going to start here on the first floor, and these are all works from our permanent collection at the museum. Do you have a collection? I like to collect pottery. What do you collect? I collect rocks. Oh, those are su such cool things to collect. I would love to hear what you collect in your personal collection. We're going to go inside, and today we're going to focus on looking for one specific thing. What are we looking for today? We're looking for animals in the artwork. Yeah, just like I spy. So let's go inside and check it out. Welcome to the gallery. This is the exhibition to see what I could see. Let's play I Spy and go find some animals. As we walk through, you're going to see a lot of different art. Some art has people in it. Some art has landscapes and animals. We're specifically looking for those animals, though. Like in this piece, we have a bison or a buffalo. Also a hand and a figure. And even in the bottom corner, we got a little teepee. This is a really cool piece of art. Over here, we got dogs and coyotes. We got coyotes up there kind of making a story. And then this puppy right here. I love this puppy, so we're going to talk about him in a little bit. Or it could be a her. We never know. Another piece of art, this might remind you of the Mona Lisa, where people are often inspired by other pieces of art when creating their art. And they give their own take, their own voice to those pieces of art. As we look over here, I spy another animal. What animal do you think that is? I think it's like a hawk or a falcon. I'm not a professional bird watcher, but I think it's one of those options. Or maybe a type of eagle. As we move our way over this way, I see an insect, a bug, a fly. Is that an animal? Discuss that with your friends. Are insects animals? Now, one last one over on this side we're going to look at. We got bunnies, rabbits. We got a little bird in the corner and a type of moose or elk. And this piece was actually made here at the Hannah Hare's Art Studio, the printmaking studio, up on the third floor. So we're going to continue our tour and check out some more art this way. I think I might spy some animals. I'm using my binoculars. I'm looking. And I see some binoculars, but I also see little birds, little drawings of birds. And this piece is titled American Crow. So maybe those are different types of crows. Let's go along this way. And if you ever get to come to the Plains Art Museum, we're still open and the admission is free. You'll be able to see all of these different types of printmaking tools. These are different tools that were used to create the art that we see all around the gallery, like this bison or buffalo. You may see this as we turn around and look over there. So that was the tool that was used to create this piece of art which we'll also talk specifically about in a little bit. We have one more set of animals over here. The reptiles, right? Or amphibians, right? I think amphibians. We have frogs. And these frogs are super cool, and we're going to talk about them in a little bit. These were made by a local artist to the area, and they're really exciting. So. We're going to now focus on three separate pieces of art. Let's get rocking. The first piece we're looking at today is made by a local artist named Kent Kaplinger. Kent worked at NDSU, the university here in Fargo, for quite a long time. Um, he's recently retired, and he's making artwork um, living outside of town on a farm, I believe. Uh, with his wife and he's really inspired by nature and he has been his whole life. He started his career actually as a farmer um, and he was seeing like how farming was changing and um, got out of it and then started making art about farming and um, things that he was observing and so we're going to be looking at these frogs here. Um, you can see that there's five pieces here 
This series is called Leopard Frog 1 through 5. What is a series, Hayden? A series, you may be familiar with a series in cartoons or in books, but a series in art would be multiple pieces of art that tell a story or fit a, you know, a narrative, and it takes your eye from one piece to the next to discover what the whole piece of artwork is about. Like if we were to look at this piece, we have a whole frog together, but is this piece the same as these pieces? No, and so when you have series of artwork, um, you typically put them together, but we had just heard that one of our friends actually has one of these pieces hanging in his house. And that's the cool thing about art is that they don't have to necessarily stay together. And the, the really cool thing about printmaking is that you can make multiples of the same image. So this piece here, it's two types of printmaking, if you care. I mean, I don't know if you care this. <laughs> Um, it's a woodcut, so you can see in this frog that um, there's little pieces of... Um, They're almost like polka dots, like where you, where you carved and dug out of the wood, just little gouges into the wood. Yeah, the artist would have started with a piece of wood and taken a sharp tool and taken little pieces, little details out of um, the piece of wood put ink on that, kind of like paint. He would put ink on the whole piece and then put it on a flat bed and then put a piece of paper over it and then roll it through this really big press and then the ink would transfer over to that piece of paper and then he would do that probably like however many colors are on here, like four or five. He would do that like five times and then he would get this piece of artwork. Yeah, these pieces are really unique because they involve animals, frogs, but these frogs, they have something peculiar, something different about them. Like, let's take a look at the middle frog. What is different about this frog than what you would see in an everyday frog? What do you think, Olivia? What's going on? Well, I've never seen a frog without a leg. This guy, he has two arms and one leg, but his other leg is missing. And I see the same thing in this piece. This guy, he has two legs, but only one arm. So it makes me think like maybe this series is about like a frog that is maybe losing his limbs or something. Do you think all of these frogs are the same frog or are they different frogs? Well, that's a great question. I think that they're different frogs. When I look at this guy compared to that guy, he's got different spots on his back. So it makes me think that they're different frogs. Oh yeah, yeah, I see. they totally have different uh, spots and different things on their backs. But I also know it's like this frog that's missing an arm but has two legs could not be this frog that has two arms and missing one leg. Because if it was the same frog, that one would have to have a missing leg, or that one would have to have a missing arm. So that's my evidence as to why they're different frogs. And in the background, it may be hard to see, but Olivia, what's going on behind the frogs? I see like some letters, some words, what's going on? Yeah, so when I saw that, it made me think um, there must be something way deeper to this. So it says, it's really hard to see, but it says, scientists searching for deformed frogs. So that makes me think that these frogs are deformed. And that word means like, they're just not like your, your normal frog, right? So they, it, they don't necessarily have two legs. Yeah, it doesn't follow like the normal standards. Like I would say this would be your normal standards of a frog, whereas these ones are missing some of those normal standards that are outlined in red, mm -hmm. um, like this limb. Now, deformed doesn't mean like that, like it's bad. It's it's more of a, an, a unique quality, you know. This happens to people sometimes too, totally. you know. So you got to think about that. It's not it's not something to poke fun and um, laugh at. It's more something to observe and just and notice. Yeah. And so thinking about, I went and I read a little bit about this work because I was I was just curious about what the the scientist has to do with it. Um, and actually, when Ken Kaplinger was a farmer, he was noticing stuff like this, noticing frogs with missing arms or missing legs. Um, and that has to do with 
like the chemicals that farmers use when they're, when they're farming to make sure like the weeds aren't there. And since frogs are amphibians and they take in so much with their skin, they were, they, they were rapidly um, changing their, the way that they develop and reproduce. So it's really interesting thinking about these really, like this beautiful series of artwork has such a deep meaning to it. Yeah, because frogs are usually found around water, right? You find it in those kind of areas. And this is caused because the farmers, when they put that stuff on their field, there's always a spot that has a slant. And when that water starts to go down that slant, it feeds into the water and it affects our wildlife, our nature. Mm -hmm. So it's really cool that Kent took the time to kind of show off this part of our world and the results that the bad side of farming, really, um, and did it in this piece of art artwork, so. Yeah, and he does this all the time with his artwork. He talks about, like, how he's, a, he's really interested in, like, the science behind um, nature and, and translates that to his artwork to show the public, like, that science, to make that um, visual and understandable for viewers like us. Yeah, maybe think if you were the artist and you wanted to make artwork about a certain animal, what animal would you choose to have in your art and what story would you tell? Think about that for a few minutes and we're going to go and look at another piece of art. Let's rock! Well, let's go! So, we've been talking a lot about the printmaking process during our little virtual tour here. In front of us, we have a lot of different tools that are used to make prints. Olivia, what do we have in front of us? So here, this is called a lithostone. It's a, a process where you use a rock. This is a rock, it's super heavy. Um, and you draw on it with like this waxy, pen or pencil that's kind of like a crayon you draw on it and then um, to make a print out of that or a piece of art you take a, a wet sponge and you put it on there and then you put some ink on there and then you put a piece of paper and you put it through a press just like we talked about with the wood cuts this really big press and then you take the piece of paper off and the ink transfers from this stone onto the piece of paper. And we actually have the piece of art that was made from this stone. Let's go look at it. Yeah, let's rock. So this is the piece of art by John Hitchcock called Palo Puro, and it was made in 2018 here at the Hannah Hers Print Studio up on the third floor. Yeah, and that's why we still have this stone to reference to show this piece of artwork. Um, it was made with our print studio manager, Amanda Height, um, and together her and John Hitchcock worked to make this piece. You can see that on the stone, all the black parts of this piece um, were from that stone, but you can also see if you get close that there's some additional marks in this work. Yeah, they're kind of this pinkish, purplish color, and they have circles and blobs, like little dots. And these are a type of pattern. What's a pattern, Olivia? Well, a pattern, a number pattern would be like one, two, one, two. Things that are repeating. Um, so we can see here like little, little, little dots, big dots, little dots, and then it kind of, you can't really see, but this would be like a dot pattern or a circle pattern. Yeah, and they even have a sense of a pattern in the back with the ovals, like big ovals, small ovals. It's kind of like any sort of mark that goes into a series. Just like we talked about with the frog, a series, right? So what do we see in this piece of art? Taking a look. Um, I see this animal, it looks like a bison or a buffalo. Um, and I know that John Hitchcock is a Native American artist, so I know that um, with Native American artists or Native American tradition, they have a really great respect for animals. And I know that bison were really important in, in their whole life. So um, bison, once they would pass away, they would use their, 
their fur for warmth, either in their homes, their teepees, or their um, coats if they needed warmth. Thinking about like how it is outside right now, you definitely need some sort of warmth. And 400 years ago, you don't have like a Walmart or somewhere to go to buy a coat. Yeah, yeah and in this piece of art, um, like Olivia was saying with the Native American tradition, that pattern at the beginning with the pink dots has to do with the Native American tr tradition of beadwork or quill work. And he watched his grandmother, I believe, as she would make those types of art um, in her personal life. And he was inspired and felt like he wanted to include some of that in this piece of art. Now, my question, Olivia, is, is what is going on in this piece of art? Like, why is this bison here? Why did John choose kind of the bison as the subject matter? What do you think? Well, I have my idea. What do you guys think? Let's pause for a second. You guys talk amongst yourself to, to see what you think. I think that this bison might just be walking through a prairie and it started raining. That's my interpretation. Yeah. See, and you think rain, but someone else could maybe think snow, right? It depends on what you think. So take that time, think about the setting, think about why this bison is there, and we're going to slowly move on to another piece of art. Let's rock! So this piece is made by Deborah May Broad, and it's titled To See What I Can See. And so, when we look at this piece, what animal do we see? I think I see a dog. What do you think? Hayden, what is the mood of this dog? I don't know. This dog doesn't seem like super happy and excited. My puppy usually is all running around, jumping crazy. This dog seems pretty chill, almost like lonely. Do you, do you feel like it feels lonely or do you feel something different? To me, it looks like this dog is really thinking hard about something. Maybe about like when his parents are coming home next, or when is he gonna get a food, we'll get to eat next. Wants a treat, or its favorite toy, its favorite ball, right? And I think that we get that sense almost from like the color that surrounds it. it is this really bright? I don't think it's really bright. No. It seems very dark, like there's a lot of blackish blues in this area. It gets a little lighter in the sky, but for the most part, it doesn't seem like it's a bright sunny day outside. Yeah, thinking about that, how would the mood change if this were like a light pink or... Maybe um, a yellow. An electric blue or mm. something. Um, do you, it would seem like maybe he's anticipating like pouncing on a a toy or um, like more playful. So it's interesting to think about how much color has to do with the mood of a piece. Yeah, if there's warm colors, which would be like yellows, oranges, and reds, mm -hmm. and there's cool colors, so blues, greens, and purples, and this is more on the cool side. You almost, if you were in this space, you would feel almost cold looking at this piece instead of warm and sunny. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so it's interesting to like think about that while um, reading about it. I learned that this piece was inspired by Deborah May had to move. Um, her husband got a job in a different state, so she was anticipating that move and feeling kind of um, scared because she had to leave all of her friends, like the people she knew. So she was feeling kind of like like bummed out it seems like and she took that energy and put it into this piece of artwork. Yeah, how many of you have had to move to a different school, meet new friends, or leave someone behind in another city? Or do anything that's like a little, like you don't know what's gonna happen, it's a little bit scary. Yeah, uncomfortable, it makes you just, yeah, nervous. nervous. Yeah. So. It's interesting to think like you can make art about that and maybe it helped Deborah May feel better about that move, mm -hmm. making a piece of art about it. Yeah, we often see that in the museum where artists will use these life experiences and tell those stories in their art. And as you come to the Plains Art Museum throughout the years that you will come here with your school, you're going to see a lot of that in different years and in different pieces of art. And you guys, if you're not here and you're making art, you can do that with your own art. 
Um, take inspiration from your life and draw about it. Make um, a series of art about it. Um, and it might help you. <laughs> yeah, I, I know Olivia makes art about her life. I put my life in a lot of my paintings or drawings. Um, and we all have different ways of expressing ourselves um, and what we've gone through. Because mm -hmm. that's what's really cool is we all have our own issues, our own problems in our lives, but we all go through something different. And maybe what you're going through, someone else is going through and doesn't know how to express themselves or have been feeling alone. Um, and this is an opportunity for people to feel together. Mm -hmm. um, this person was lonely, just like one of you might be lonely moving to a new school or Living trying. in a pandemic. Yeah, living in a pandemic. Oh <laughs> my goodness. Being able to see your friends. Exactly. That is a yeah. great point because we've all been stuck inside and lonely. Your parents or your whoever takes care of you may not let you hang out with your friends like you want to. And that's a bummer. But we're going to get mm -hmm. past this. And yeah. I think this is a good reminder mm -hmm. of that kind of those feelings and... We're gonna make it. Yeah, yeah, and so we are really looking forward to you guys coming to the museum next year, hopefully. Mm -hmm. um, we really miss you guys, and we're, we're kind of feeling like this old doggy, but um, moving forward, we're going to look at art together one day. Yeah, we'll be back together one day, and we're actually gonna be coming and visiting your schools, making some penguins, so we're really That's excited. Fun. We've been mm -hmm. We've been going to schools this last month, and it's been great to see your bright shiny faces once again and as a reminder we want to encourage you you saw all the art that we went through today and just know even though we can't come here with our whole class you can come here with your family friends or whoever you want to show the Plains Art Museum. As long as you have a mask you must have a mask when you come into the museum. Um, this was just one gallery out of like six galleries here and there's a lot of really good art up right now so we hope you come and visit um, and until then, take care, make some art. See you guys later. Bye.